Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to talk about the divergence test for infinite series, which is one of the first tests you will use when you're thinking about checking for convergence or divergence of some infinite series. So the divergence test is super short to state. It basically says that if the limit of the terms in your series is not zero, then the sum of the terms will diverge. Now this divergence test cannot tell you if it converges, it can only tell you if it diverges. Let's look at some intuition behind the divergence test. Let's say the limit is a half, right? So the idea is you start with some series and the terms, you're adding up an infinite number of them and these terms are getting closer and closer to a half. So eventually we are way, way down the line maybe, millions and billions of terms possibly. We're getting very, very close to something that is about a half, right? So if I, no matter what I'm adding here, if at some point I start getting around one half and then I keep adding a half forever, 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, if I keep counting that way forever, then we're going to get an infinite amount of stuff eventually, right? Even if the limit is something smaller, let's say something like 0.1, it's closer to zero, but it's not zero. Same thing here, right? I have maybe lots of terms up front that they add to something, but then at some point and forever more beyond that, I have terms that are about 0.1 and I'm adding those up forever. So 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. I keep adding that way forever. I'm going to get an infinite amount of stuff no matter what these first several terms were. So unless the limit of the terms is zero, then we know that the sum diverges. Now the test can fail. So let's look at an example here. We want to apply the divergence test and state if the series diverges or that the test just fails. Remember, it can't converge by the divergence test. You can tell by its name. So if I have the sum of n plus one over four n minus one, you might be able to look at this and know from pre-calculus what the limit is or what the horizontal asymptote of this would be if it was a function. This is is uh, indeterminate form actually, but one iteration of L'Hopital's rule will tell us that the limit is actually one fourth here. Since the limit is one fourth and that limit is not zero, then we know that the sum will diverge. Eventually we're getting terms that are close to one fourth and adding something close to one fourth forever means that we will diverge eventually. So this actually diverges by the divergence test this series does. If we look at another here, we have the sum of one over n squared. Thinking about the limit of one over n squared, I have one on top and I have something that's getting infinitely large on the bottom and the square of that. So the limit of this formula here, one over n squared is zero. And if the limit is zero, remember that tells us simply that the test fails and we cannot say for sure, at least by the divergence test, whether or not this converges or diverges. So we would have to find another way to do that, which we'll do in our next video. Looking at another one, we have the infinite sum of e to the one over n. So you can see the one over n is now in the exponent and what's happening is that our exponent is actually going to approach zero like one over n does. And so we get the limit of e to the one over n is going to be e to the zero, which is one. So since the limit is one and that number is not zero, then we know by the divergence test that the sum of e to the one over n diverges by this test. Hopefully you get a sense of what we're doing is we're using the limit of the terms to determine if the sum of the terms diverges or the test fails. Here we have the sum of ln of n over n factorial. If you think about the limit of ln of n over n factorial, you might recognize that this top here is logarithmic growth and the bottom is factorial growth. And based on one of our recent videos, you probably can tell that factorial growth is faster than logarithmic growth. And when the bottom blows up much more quickly than the top, even though these are both infinite growth rates, then we know that this limit is zero, which is great that we know that, but with the divergence test, when the limit is zero, we get that the test fails. We only get something from the divergence test when the limit is not zero. So here the divergence test fails on this particular sum. We would not know just by using the divergence test. Let's look at one more sum here. We've got the sum from one to infinity of one minus one over n all to the n. If you shift gears and think of this as a limit, 
Uh, the limit of 1 minus 1 over n to the n might be familiar to you. It's one of the special limits that we talked about in one of our other videos. And remember that 1 plus some constant over n to the n as a limit, that's going to be e to whatever constant is over n. So since I have negative 1 actually over my n here, then this limit is actually going to be e to the negative 1, also known as 1 over e, the reciprocal of e. But this number is not 0. 1 over e is not 0. So since the limit is not 0, we we know that this will diverge by the divergence test. If you're still wondering why the divergence test will not tell us if something converges, uh, we want to just really quick explain why the divergence test fails when the limit is zero. So I have tier. This is a geometric series and the ratio is one fourth. When you have a geometric series, and the ratios between negative 1 and 1, remember the series converges and we actually know a formula that it converges to. This sum of 1 over n on the right is the harmonic series, and we know from our previous video that the harmonic series diverges. So what do we have? Well, I have a geometric series with ratio 1 fourth, and I have the harmonic series. If I look at the limit of these formulas, the limit of 1 fourth to the n is 0. The limit of 1 over n is 0. So the limit of the terms is both 0, but one of them converges and one of them diverges. So you can see with these two side by side why a limit of 0 does not tell us if it converges or diverges. The test is simply inconclusive when that happens, and so we have to say that the test fails. Okay everyone, hopefully this gives you a good sense of the divergence test for infinite series. Next up in our list of tests for infinite series is the integral test. We'll see you in the next one.